Well, hello and happy Friday. Welcome to the last day of this week. Uh, you made it another week. Congratulations. Uh, I just want to pause right now before I go into today's lesson and thank you guys. Thank you guys for following through with assignments. Thank you guys for following through with the exam. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Um, this is brand new to me, uh, moving fully online in a remote access type class. Uh, so I, I thank you for your patience. I have not been perfect. I, by far, I have not been perfect. Um, but I do thank you uh, for working hard and getting your stuff done. Uh, that makes it easier on me. Uh, and I hope that you are still learning uh, as we go through this. I think the last, this last chapter, chapter 12, um, was very good in terms of annuities. That is the basis for a lot of the finance that you will be doing in terms of loans and arrangements and savings uh, that you'll work with. Uh, you need to be able to know how to calculate those things. So I think it's very pertinent. Um, it, was, it was great to go from chapter 12 to chapter 14. In chapter 12, we learned what annuities were. Um, and as we've moved to 14, talking about mortgages, that is... Uh, a present value annuity and uh, you can use those formulas to calculate a mortgage we've been using tables here uh, but you can use uh, the uh, amortization annuity formula uh, for your mortgage to figure out payments and helps you figure out how much interest you're going to pay uh, etc etc so it was a good jump to 14 uh, to be able to work on this Okay, so the first two sections of 14, uh, I'm going to jump in now, are uh, we talked about uh, the payments and the interest. So you, you figured out basically what my payment is um, for a mortgage. We also then, and I think it's very important because it is, a, it is what you are doing every time you make a payment on a mortgage. All right, we want to be able to show that, um, and that was section three. Or I'm section two, um, and we basically did the start of an amortization. I always call it an amortization table. It's also called an amortization schedule. But you know, uh, based off that formula, when you figure your payments for that annuity, all right, for that amortization, you can figure out how much interest is paid each month and how much principal is paid off each month. Then it shows you, this is really telling you, uh, most people say, oh, the interest is all front loaded. And actually all this is requiring you when you do this type of payment. And, and that's what mortgages and car loans, these are how they are calculated. You are just paying the interest due that month. That's what's happening. And that's how they reduce your principal. So they calculate the payments in such a way so that at the end of the loan, your last payment is paying uh, the last bit of interest and then all of the remaining principal. That's what your last payment is. It's a very small interest payment and the rest of the remaining principal. So that's how it's calculated. And you can see that you are just paying the interest each month. And I want to reiterate that if you pay extra principal each month, your loan balance goes down a little more, which means you would pay less interest the next month. So as I was saying, in this example here, we're paying 805, so what if I pay an extra $100? Well, my loan balance goes down $100. And as you understand, we take the previous loan balance for the previous month, so after my first payment, it says here it's 149,819.50. If I paid an extra 100, so it's 719.50, using the simple interest formula, interest equals principal times rate times time, my principal is less now, which means I'm going to pay less interest. Now, you think, well, $100, that's not going to make a big difference. But you have to understand, it not only makes a difference on this interest payment, but that's $100 less on the next interest payment. That's $100 less on the next. That $100 rolls down through the remainder of the loan period. So you're not only saving interest that month, but interest every month after that. So that's why it is so important as you see this. Mathematically, you can see here, the sooner you can pay off your loan, the less interest you're going to pay. The more you can pay on a balance at the beginning, 
that will work its way down through the remainder of the loan as well. So you'll save money on that. So it's if you can start paying extra at the beginning, that is great. You will save much more interest that way and pay your loan off earlier and save yourself a lot of cash. So I just wanted to reiterate that as we went into that. So we, we figured out the mortgage and interest payment, your, your standard payment. We figured your payment using the table. And then we showed a more amortization uh, schedule. And you could see the interest and monthly uh, principal payments. And then we figured out, we explained that for a lot of people whose credit isn't up to snuff, um, the mortgage lender will ask you to keep your taxes and insurance in escrow. And that's protection for them in case you default, knowing that there's money there to pay that at the end of the year. Um, they just... They have the data, they have the analytics to tell them that it is it is prudent for them to require uh, lenders, depending upon their credit rating, to have an escrow account for insurance and taxes. All right, and so we figured out how to pay that. Um, basically, you're just taking the totals of your insurance and your taxes for the year, divide them by 12, and add it to your payment. That's easy enough. All right, so what we want to talk about now in section four, and this is on page 458, is we want to go into closing costs. You know, wh what does it mean to actually buy your home? We're talking about mortgages now, so that's buying a home. So I just want to go over some terms and then we'll calculate what are your closing costs. Now closing is just the, the, the meeting between the buyer and the seller and usually a third party, whether it's an attorney or the real estate agent who's certified to do this, a closing agent. Um, where you sign the papers, the deed is handed over, you know your final costs, uh, the, the seller will know what their proceeds are. So it's just all that legal documentation to make sure that uh, the title's clean uh, and everybody follows through and signs and the loan is, is uh, started, um, cash uh, down payments, you know, what the buyer owes up front at the closing. So we're going to figure all that out today. All right. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the title or the deed of the property. And that just shows legal ownership. So when the buyer, uh, the buyer would sign over the deed and the title. Uh, I'm sorry, the seller would sign over the title and the deed to the buyer. Uh, and that's why you normally need like a real estate attorney or a closing agent because they work through the whole title process to get the title transferred over. All right. Um, <clears throat> And then you have to figure there are closing costs. So there are fees. Um, your attorney or your uh, your real estate agent is going to have fees, seller costs. There's taxes. There's in Pennsylvania you do pay sales tax on the on the selling and buying of a house. Um, uh, title fees. There's title search fees uh, to make sure that the title is clean, that the person selling it really does own the house uh, or the property. All right. Um, and so you, you would work down through all of that, and that's just giving you some definitions here, okay? Settlement and closing, that's just the document, just listing everything out that you signed. Uh, when I purchased my home that I live in now, I, I did it uh, for sale by owner. I bought it from a person selling it on their own. So I hired a real estate attorney, and it was the best thing I ever did. It saved me a lot of um, uh, fees in terms of what I might have to pay a real estate agent. So I didn't have that. Um, I didn't have commission to pay to a real estate agent. So that saved me 7% right there. Um, and uh, the uh, seller was, was willing to sell it at a lower price because they were taking less of a hit as well. So it, it was just nice to do that. The attorney was great, did all the title search for me, was very reasonable, uh, and everything was buttoned up legally. So um, you can always look at an attorney or if you're working through a real estate agent, they have all the, the legal capabilities to uh, do title transfers and they have an organization or they have companies that help them do that. So um, that's usually what happens and that's what settlement is. The day of settlement is when, you, when the seller hands you the key as the buyer, okay? Um, if we go over then to page 460, all right, we're just going to walk through here um, what uh, calculating the closing costs. So what, what does that all involve? So if we read here, Barry and Donna are purchasing a $180,000 home. Okay, 
So that's first we need to know that. They're, they're going to pay. They have agreed to pay $180,000. So they've negotiated. They put in an offer. Maybe they went back and forth. Maybe they originally offered 170 and the buyer said, no, too low. So that happens too. There is negotiation that goes back and forth. And finally, they agreed upon price is $180,000. The down payment is they are putting down 25%. All right, so initially up front, they're going to put down 25% of 180,000. Uh, so that is approximately 45,000 that they're going to put down. Okay, um, so $45,000 is their down payment. Uh, the, uh, the balance will be financed, meaning the remainder of the purchase price. Uh, so they're going to get a mortgage for 25 years and it's fixed rate. That's what we like. Uh, and at six and a half percent, so their mortgage rate is six and a half percent, and they're going to pay two discount points. Now I wanted to explain that real quick. When we talk discount points, I had mentioned that earlier. Uh, that was one of the definitions. Uh, but if I can just write that, a discount point. All right. Let's say that based on your credit rating, the lending organization says, "Yep." you are eligible for a 7.25% interest rate. In this current situation, in this current day and time, that's really high. Um, but let's just say, hey, you are eligible for that. But you know what? Um, if you are willing for two discount points, we will give you a rate of 5%. Now, that's a big jump right there. So what you need to figure out, what the discount points are, is uh, for every discount point, they are asking you up front to pay the lender 1% of the amount borrowed. That's what a discount point is. So if you're going to borrow, in this case, they're borrowing $135,000. All right. So if they're being charged points, that would be 1%. So two decimal places, they're going to charge them $1,350 per point. So that would be $2,700 for two points. All right. It would just be whatever 1% of the price is times however many points. So that's what discount points are. And that's a fee up front that they'll charge. Now, what you would be, you would have to calculate as the buyer or the mortgage uh, signee, the mortgagee, all right, is that you would have to figure how much interest am I saving? Now, two and a quarter percent, you're saving way more than $2,700 if it's two points. So I would jump on that in a heartbeat and say, oh yeah, if I can get that, that's going to save me way more in the long run, way more. Now you can figure this out. All you got to do is figure out what your payments would be on a mortgage with seven and a quarter percent versus five percent, subtract the two total interest rates, and that's how much you would save. And if that is more than the total points, 1% per point of the amount borrowed, then that's a deal, all right? If, if by paying points you are paying more, or maybe you just don't have the cash up front, you might have to settle for the bigger interest rate. And then maybe later down the road, when you are more fiscally um, stable or capable, maybe you look at refinancing to get a lower rate. Maybe your credit score will go up by that point, okay? So that I just wanted to briefly explain that's what points are. Okay. So in this case, Barry and Donna are going to pay two discount points, and each point is 1% of the amount financed. So that's going to be a cost up front that they have to pay. Uh, so that probably means that this six and a half percent was probably either seven percent or maybe seven and a quarter percent, and it dropped it that much. All right. But that even even three quarters of a percent over the life of 25 years is probably more interest than two discount points now. All right, but you could easily calculate that out. Um, when Barry and Donna signed the sales contract, they put down a pot. So when they made the offer, they said, hey, here's 15000 to start. This is how serious we are. So they are putting down 25% as a down payment. All right, so that would be due at closing that twenty five percent. But when they when they gave their offer and signed the sales contract before closing, they also put down fifteen thousand to say we're good, we're serious. This is we are serious about this. Here's fifteen thousand up front. Okay, so they've already paid fifteen thousand dollars, and that will be credited to their down payment at the time of closing. 
All right. So the 45,000 that they are guaranteeing for down payment, they've already paid 15 of that. All right. So they're just going to owe another 30 after that. That'll be calculated in the closing costs. They must pay the following expenses. You get your credit card, credit report pulled. So that was $80. The appraisal of the home to make sure that the mortgage company, uh, you are not overpaying and the mortgage company is not giving you more money than the house is worth. They don't want to give you a $200,000 mortgage on a home that's only worth $100,000. That would be bad for the mortgage company. Because at that point, you would just... Uh, uh, the, the, the seller would be making out there big time. All right? And the mortgage lender could be on the hook for something that they can't get reimbursed for. So the appraisal fee is $150. Uh, title insurance... Premium is half a percent on the amount financed. So the title insurance is basically the company is ensuring that when they check out the title, that it is true. And if anything is wrong with the title in the future, the title insurance company picks up all those costs to make it clean again, to make a clean title. Okay. And there are instances of this. I, I just want to share this is that uh, this is an example from Dave Ramsey. Uh, he said that he he did real estate. He did, he bought and sold a lot of real estate, and he bought a home um, from two sisters at a, an estate sale. Um, and so he paid the two sisters for the home, um, and so he had the title to the home. The title came to him. He went through closing, and he had it all. And then a year or two later, this man comes to him and says, "Hey, you owe me for this home. <laughs> I own this home." And he's like, what? What are you talking about? Here, these two sisters had a brother that they didn't mention, and the brother was in the will, and he was a third owner of this home. Well, the title company, when they did the title search, didn't figure this out, and they messed up. So Dave went to the title company and said, hey, I don't have a clean title. This guy says he's a third owner because of the will. The title company went back and researched it, found out that is correct. He was part owner. So since the title company insured the title was clean and you paid for that insurance up front, that was a cost, the title company paid the guy his, his share. So the title company had to pay a third of the selling price to uh, this third person who owned the home. So in title insurance is important. It is important, and it'll it, it it's again insurance is there as a protection against large risk. Some people think, oh, what a waste! I'll never get anything out of it. You save for the small risks. That's what your emergency savings is for. Insurance is there for the big risks. Dave would not want to would what? Sorry, Dave would not have wanted to pay another third for the house to this guy to get him to sign off on the title. The insurance company did it. The title insurance company did. So that's what the title insurance is. They ensure the title is clean. All right, so that's the title insurance. And then the title search is another $200, all the research done to make sure it's clean. And then, of course, the attorney fees, $450. That's to make sure all the documents are legal and things like that. So we're going to calculate the closing costs. All right. And the closing cost, if we go over here, the down payment was a is 25% of 180,000. So the down payment is 45,000, okay? The amount financed then is going to be 180,000 minus 45. So their loan is going to be for 135,000 and they're going to owe 45 up front. Now, we were talking about discount points. Now the discount points remember, they're getting they're paying discount points so they get a lower interest rate. And a point is a percent. So they're paying two points, two percentage points of the amount financed. So 135000 times 2% would be $2,700. All right, so what we're doing is we're figuring out what the closing cost is. So the points is 2700 That's the first line. The down payment, they've already paid $15,000. we are just talking about closing now. With the sales contract, they paid $15,000. So the $45,000 down payment, which is 25%, of the agreed upon price minus what they've already paid. So they, they owe another 30, all right? We already looked at the credit report pool was 80. The appraisal fee was 150. Title insurance is half a percent of what's being borrowed, 135,000. So that's calculated at 675. The title search was 200 and the attorney fees was 450. So due at closing, uh, Barry and Donna would have to have a check for 34,255 
dollars. Now, the one thing I will mention here that didn't mention escrow. Normally, you would be paying into escrow right now or any tax due on the home for that year. All right. They would prorate it and you would have to pay the tax up to that. Make sure the tax is paid to that year. And then you'd have to pay. Actually, the, the seller would have to make sure the tax is paid up to that point in the year. And then you would owe at closing the remainder of the year in taxes and insurance, if that makes sense. So you would pay that. That would be part of closing as well. They don't mention it here. But if you're buying in April, you would owe May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. You would owe uh, eight months of taxes. So 80%, or no, eight times 12, not 80%. Eight divided by 12. All right, you would owe eight months of taxes, and they would charge you that as part of closing. All right, and then after that, all your payments would go into escrow, if that makes sense. And then you would pay your bill at the end of the year through escrow. All right, now part B of this was uh, if the seller, if we go back here, if the sellers are responsible for the bankers or broker's commission, all right, which is 6% of the purchase price. They're also responsible for $900 in other closing costs, probably just other fees, and the existing mortgage with a balance of $50,000. So they still owed $50,000 on their home. All right, they had $50,000 left in the balance. What will their proceeds be? All right, that means how much will they get for the sale of their home, okay? So we know the selling price was $180,000. That's the agreed upon price. Uh, the broker's fee, 6%, so 6% of, of the selling price would be $10,000, 800. Closing cost, the extra closing cost is $900. And then the mortgage payoff, they still have to pay $50,000 to their mortgage lender. So when you total that up, that's $61,700. So you would subtract that from their agreed upon sale price. So they should get a check for $118,000. All right. So at closing, Barry and Donna, need a check for 34,255 and the seller would then get a check for 118,300 and that's where the attorney would have all that done all this check would be written out you'd have a banker's check for this and he would author, authentic, authenticate it usually with a banker's check that's that's all you need that's official enough i think you pay like two dollars per a thousand or two dollars per ten thousand for banker's check something like that you, you have to pay for it. So it's like a $15 to write that check. And that's just ensuring that it's official, it's printed out, nothing handwritten on it except your signature. All right. So uh, what I would like you to do, I know this was a little longer, but what I would like you to do is try it exercise four. Let's figure out the closing cost and the proceeds for Jonathan. He's purchasing a townhouse. So uh, go ahead and practice that and I'll come back with the answer.